Hello everybody, my name is Billy and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to host your static website on a Azure Blob and CDN. The reason why you'll want to have your hosting on a Blob and CDN is the cost. The cost is way cheaper than having an app service or having a container service. You'll probably be paying less than a few cents when you start off and if your traffic grows maybe even under a dollar a month for your monthly cost. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to set up your Blob account, how to set up your CDN account, and then also how you can set up Azure DevOps to use a CI CD pipeline so when you make any changes, it will automatically get deployed. So let's get to it. The first thing you want to do is create your storage account. So I'm going to click create storage account. And if you don't have a resource group, just create a new one. And then give it a storage account name. So this has to be unique. Um, I'm just going to give it that as a name. I'm going to choose standard. You can choose premium. I believe the difference will be you'll have an SSD, so better performance. You want to use storage version 2. You can't use any of the other ones because they won't have the static website. Um, your replication, I'm going to choose local because we're going to put a CDN on top of it and then have that distribute. So click review and create. And then just click create. So this will take a few minutes to kind of set up everything. So we'll continue after it's done. Okay, so it looks like it has been created. Let's go back to storage account to make sure it's there. All right. And one of the things you're going to want to look for is something called static website. It is right here, or you can use the little search if you can't find it. So just search for static website and then it'll be right here. So if you just start off, your container will be empty. And as soon as you click enable and click save, you will be generated a URL and then also a container called dollar sign web. So if you go back to close this and then you look for blobs right under blob service, you'll see that a container one has been created. You'll go in and it'll be an empty container. So let's go back to the static website and then configure that to look for an index HTML. All right. And then we're going to go to our blob, click web. I'm going to show you how to do an upload here first. And then afterwards, we're going to actually build out the pipeline. Okay, so what we're going to be uploading is a simple page. All it has is a home page and an about page. So we can just see it going back and forth. And if you just want to see the code of it, it's just a simple index HTML page and a simple page with about. I made it dark just because it won't like blind you guys when I switch back and forth. Okay, so let's go back to the site here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this. I'm going to do this and navigate to my directories. Source, learning. I put in the static. Use these two files. Click upload. And then you can see the progress of it being uploaded. It should be pretty fast. All right, so now that they are actually uploaded, what you have to do is change your permission for the web. Um, it defaultly comes with private, so you're gonna change that to blob and click okay to that. And you want to go back now. And one of the key differences between having the static site and having a regular storage account is the URL is gonna be different. When you first set it up, you're gonna be configured with a URL for the storage account. But because you are using a static website now, you want to actually go to static website and you're going to see the primary endpoint. This is going to be different from the storage accounts URL. You're going to copy this and then you're going to open the tab and then you're just going to punch this in. And now you can see that the website has actually been deployed, right? So it just goes back and forth, simple as that. Um, let's close this and just make sure that you actually copy this URL. And I'll explain why in one second. So I'm just copy this and we're going to go to the CDN profiles now. So remember, make sure you copy this here, add new, give it a second to load and then give this as a name as well. So I'll try to just give this the same name. Hopefully it's not taken. Existing group. I'm going to choose the same group I had earlier and I'm going to choose standard Akamai. You can configure it to another one if you want, but I typically just use this one to start off with. Same name. And then here is where you're going to choose, um, rather than having a storage account, you're going to choose custom origin. 
And what you're going to do here is you're going to paste um, the URL you just copied, but what you're going to have to do is you have to remove the HTTP and you also have to remove the trailing backslash, right? Make sure you do that or else it won't detect it and you'll have to contact Microsoft and wonder why their stuff is broken. So that's very important. Just keep it plain like this, click create, and then just give it a second to actually create everything and we will continue after it's all done. Okay, so our CDN is created. Let's click into it just to confirm um, one thing. Um, make sure that the account actually exists here. Make sure it's custom origin. And then we go here and we just want to verify that the URL inputted is the same URL in the storage account. So this URL right here should match the one in the static website config here. And then this is the URL that the CDN will now um, serve up. So you can see it's the same website and now it's going to be uh, replicated um, like a regular CDN. And one extra thing, if you guys do want to do, you should have a custom domain. Obviously, if you are going to go production, you don't want to have this URL as your primary URL. So you can set up your custom domains. Um, there should be documentation if you just look Azure CDN um, custom domains. So I'm going to stop here for now, just so we can have a nice separation between setting up and having the Azure DevOps. But in the next video, I'm going to set up the Azure DevOps pipeline and show you how to have a smooth and easy way to continuously work on your project. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.